Hey everybody, so I'm going to record the uh, decal session on this kit from start to finish. I'll just uh, time warp it so it doesn't take the hours for you that it's going to take for me. Uh, it's definitely going to be an involved process. I'm figuring maybe an hour or two, but I've heard reports that it could be three or four or more. So uh, let's get into it right now. The uh, top of the saucer there, that just got its uh, clear gloss coat and that's not going to be dry till later tonight so I'm going to get a move on these parts here. The reason why you want to put a clear gloss down is that that really facilitates the uh, setting the decals up. If you've got a matte surface it's got a lot of teeth to it so that's going to really stick the decal fast so by having that gloss that just helps slide things around into position. Then you put a matte pass over that. In this case I picked up a can of clear pearl Tamiya I was going to get some white pearl for a base coat, but then I figured if the decals are going to cover that, I'd probably do better off having a uh, clear pearl overcoat. So we'll see how that works. Hopefully that's not a lacquer because this is enamel paint and lacquer over enamel will ruin everything. So taking a look at the decals here, I'm just going to concentrate on the secondary hole in the cells like I mentioned. So I've pulled the kit apart into uh, four pieces. The saucer, as you saw, the two engines, and then the rest of the body in the middle there. So uh, I'm probably going to concentrate on the secondary hole for the moment and the neck and the uh, pylons. And what I've done to facilitate that is start pre-cutting some of the decal sheets up to just kind of get an eye of what's really going on here. So like on sheet three here in the middle, I don't need this part because that's for the saucer, but all the rest of it looks like it pretty much goes on the secondary hull. And over here on sheet two, I don't need this part, this part, this one, or this in the middle here. So what we're really looking at is just these sections here, plus those. And of course I haven't cut sheet one at all because this is just for the saucer entirely. And I don't need to cut that, so I don't want to do anything that I don't need to do this early on in the stage because the more smaller parts you get with these decals, the more likely they are to uh, get lost, at least in my situation. So, uh, there's definitely some more cutting to do, and I've got some lunch in the oven, so I will be taking a break at some point really quick. So what I'm going to do right now is just prep a lot of these parts. Some of these bigger ones, like the pylons, those are just obvious shapes, and I don't necessarily, uh, I'm not necessarily worried if I lose the decal number to them. Uh, some of them, because I know the design fairly well, I just know where parts are going to go. However, some of them, it's not quite so obvious, so I want to try and keep the numbers with them. So, I'll slice a few more of these up off camera just to get everything going and ready. I've got the tools I need, the X-Acto there, uh, a little pointy tool here to help me position the uh, decals into place. There's the scissors, got some Q-tips to help things out. Let's pull down the solve set This is a decal setting solution. This is one of the main major brands from Walters, and then another one is uh, Microscale. Let's see, not that one. There's Microset, and then Microsol. So I don't tend to use these because it's a two-part solution, and one goes down before the decal and the other one goes down over the decal and I can never remember which is which whereas solve set it's a one stop solution put a little down before the decal put a little down afterwards and uh, what these do is chemically these are hot solutions which means they're going to interact with the decal and really set it down into some of those fine panel lines and uh, get it to grip the surface and if you use enough of this stuff, it almost literally melts the decal into the plastic and you can never remove it ever again with the hardest of scraping. So that's some really great stuff. It doesn't actually melt the details of the decal. Just uh, chemically it gets that undersurface going. So I think that's it. I definitely need another bowl of water, of course. I haven't got that yet. One thing I just saw online is there's one guy who uses the uh, glass from a clock and he keeps that on a coffee pot warmer. So that's definitely a nice little trick idea. I'm not a coffee drinker, so I don't have a coffee pot warmer, but that's definitely something I'm gonna keep in mind. Even a hot plate would be really good. So uh, 
let me do a little more cutting and I'll catch up with you in a minute okay so here's a couple other notes before I get started I've taken all the decals that I absolutely don't need and put them over to the side so there's no danger of them getting wet misplaced or damaged or anything like that I've got the directions taped up to my wall here it'd be really nice if I could put a cork board there but it's really not feasible the way I've got everything uh, set up underneath it uh, what else so I went ahead and did a lot more cutting here <clears throat> just doing the major shapes the way round two laid out the decals was really nice because almost everything occurs in pairs so uh, in some cases I may not have to cut any further because decals that go close to close to each other on the ship are also close to each other on the sheets as well uh, I will be using the stand to help out in placing the decals and uh, but for now what I think I'm going to do the strategy is I'm going to do the pylons in the neck first and then uh, put this on the stand start working on the hull as much as I can and then uh, hopefully the neck and pylons will be dry a little later so I can actually start handling things and I'll be able to put all the rest down. There's only a couple spots of glue I've put on this model. Everything else is really tight. This uh, strong back here, this entire top piece is glued down to uh, help keep the pylons in place and the bottom of the neck is glued to the hull. I think I ran a little bead of glue along the inside of the back side of that seam uh, just because seams being what they are, they are kind of obvious in some cases. But overall, this is definitely pretty good. For a $25 kit, certainly one of the better ones you'll find for the engineering of it all. The uh, other place I had to put a little glue was on the uh, nacelle here, and that's because I broke one of the registration pins. And uh, you'll also note that the uh, forward round grill parts are kind of gone, or not in yet, and that's because I'm going to paint those separately and pop them in later. Hopefully I didn't blow them on the floor somewhere because if I did then I'm going to have some trouble finding all four. And uh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. I got lunch coming out of the oven in a minute now. So this is basically where I'm going to leave everything at. And hopefully I'll be able to set the camera up so that we've got a really good view of everything and I'm not wandering out of frame too much. What I really need is a small TV to act as a monitor so I can look at what's going on and make sure I stay in frame. But uh, somewhere in this area should be pretty good. So uh, if you guys are ready, I'm just about ready and we'll start up. And one last, last note is that uh, I want to thank Skinny Once over at Hobby Talk for sending me this cutting mat. Uh, he had seen that I was cutting on just regular cardboard and kind of took sympathy on me, I guess, and sent this along. and. This is the inaugural use of this piece and really I don't know how I got away without it. It's really great for cutting and uh, definitely thanks a lot Skinny. It's definitely a good use and it's going to be put to good use over the uh, coming years. So thanks again.